Cat Flynn represents the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not under the protection of the blood, and it's if good old Hammerlin, gotta love it. Good day and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. If you're enjoying our series of videos, please take a moment and like and subscribe. We could really use the support. And if you do that, I'd be great grateful. So today we're going to start looking at a uh, Hammerland H2140XA. Um, and if you're following along, uh, working with uh, receivers and whatnot, please always remember there are lethal high voltages present on the bottoms of these things and other places as well. So take all the necessary safety precautions you need to protect yourself and keep yourself safe. And remember, if you are following along, you're doing so at your own risk. So now that we've got that boilerplate out of the way, this uh, 140 receiver I've had for a while, and when I brought it in, I noticed that somebody had replaced some of the filter caps in the power supply um, rather than doing it properly they just cut terminals off the bottom of the uh, off the sectioned cap and then tagged them in underneath and it's not a very nice job it's kind of sort of a, a bad job and I also noticed one of the power resistors in the power supply um, is a, uh, I believe it's a 15 watt, 1000 ohm ceramic resistor, uh, where the ceramic coating is actually falling off the resistor and you can see the wire wind, wire winding inside. It still works and still measures proper, but we've got to change that out. It's not safe anymore. Um, so I guess we're going to do a little bit of an inspection here. Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing a full restore, but maybe. Um, other things that I notice are, is there a little bit of rust with this receiver? The uh, transformer, the main power transformer looks a little bit rusty. The uh, dial uh, light uh, holders look a little bit rusty. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, the dial calibration is close, but it's not perfect. Uh, the crystal phasing seems to get a good notch on one side, but maybe not on the other, so I'll have to look at that. Um, so there's a host of things we want to do and look at. The top of the chassis needs a good cleanup. It's a radio that's not been looked after for a good period of years, but um, it's not uh, not catastrophically bad at all. It just needs a little bit of a a little bit of a touch to make it better. So uh, the whole point of this process is to see what it needs and try to make it everything that it can be. Um, so far, tuning around with it, me, I'm, I, I, I like the Hamelin receiver, but this one has kind of impressed me. The crystal filter does work very nice. Um, you know, I've used them on other radios like an SX100, and the SX99 has got one. This one works exceedingly well, and I like it. Um, so I may fix this up and use this as a dedicated uh, receiver. Um, but so let's... Uh, Let's take a look at the mess of the caps and that one resistor underneath. And, uh, um, and of course, we're going to look at the power cord. The power cord on this, although it's got a, uh, a polarized plug on it, um, it is not a grounded plug. And uh, one thing that we're going to look at the schematic, Hamerlin was good enough to put a fuse in but they weren't good enough to wire it properly. They've kind of sort of got it wired bass backwards, and we're going to kind of fix that. We'll look at the schematic and get into all that in a minute. But right now, let's just flip it over and look at the underside and see what we're dealing with. 
Okay, a quick look at the uh, underside of the chassis here. It doesn't look too horrible. There's a little bit of corrosion on the bottom edge of this chassis here that doesn't really concern me because the rest of it's quite clean. So uh, we'll just kind of sort of maybe treat it with something to stop that uh, corrosion problem. But one of the things that I'd like to point out here, um, and I've noticed this with a lot of the Hamlins, they didn't use wax paper tubular capacitors, they put disc capacitors throughout, which have a big tendency uh, um, in most situations to not fail. So they tended to last a good long time and it was only the, uh, the filter caps from the power supply that would really give any grief. So uh, uh, certainly hats off to them for getting that job done and uh, having the receivers uh, with a good longe longevity factor, I guess that's how I would say it. But let's take a, let's zoom in and look at where uh, some of these problems are that I was talking about. Okay, here we are zoomed in on the bottom of the power supply. Let, I'll just go through what I see. Now, I've got a couple of capacitors that have just been loosely tagged on here and removed from the main capacitor. This is the... Uh, choke for the power supply which we'll look at the schematic in a minute this is the power resistor that i was talking about you can see the wires here and that the ceramic coating whatever it is i guess has ch chipped off and the wire is beginning to corrode so those are a couple of initial problems i see now i'm not sure how well you can see this on camera these are supposed to be the ac filter caps uh, um, that take out transients and other types of noise and whatnot. But it's got a hole blown in it here, and it's got a hole blown in it here. Um, and of course, we've just got a two wire uh, feed cord, so we're gonna drill that out and put a larger strain relief in. We're gonna put in one of our three, three prong plugs. This is the fuse holder that's on the top of the chassis. So we'll make sure, and we're gonna look at the schematic and, and Hammerland actually wired this wrong right from the factory. I'm very surprised that their engineers didn't didn't catch this problem. Um, it's not exactly wired to code. Um, so we'll look at that on the schematic in a minute. But we're going to fix that up. We're going to put a three-wire cord in here and get that all, all sorted out. So I think <clears throat> step one for this receiver is going to be our typical power supply uh, step is to where we're going to deal with the cord and the filter caps and... Uh, uh, we'll look at all the resistors and whatnot around the audio tube and whatnot, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so let's um, let's take a look at the schematic and find out or or see where I feel that uh, Hammerlin kind of sort of went a little bit wrong. And just to point out, somebody's put an SO239 connector in here with a little bit of a bot solder job. I guess we'll have to fix that up. Maybe if the connectors. I may put a new one in and a new wire, but we'll uh, we'll take a look at that too, but not right away. We'll uh, we'll do this power supply portion first, and now we'll look at the schematic. Well, all right, here we're looking at the power supply of the 140, and this is uh, one of the areas we would want to look at. <coughs> and uh, Hammerlin was kind enough to put in a fuse, and of course a switch, but we're kind of violating the ideology that the first stop to the fuse is the hot lead. And if you did that in this case, if this was the hot lead, you'd still have, even when the, the neutral was disconnected, you'd have hot running through the transformer, which is not a good idea. And this is where I think they went wrong. The proper ideology would be have the hot run through the fuse then to the switch, and then through the transformer. So we're going to rewire it to do that. Um, that makes uh, brings a lot more safety in, into play, and of course the ground. And we're going to. These are the two capacitors that had holes burned in them. Uh, so we will replace those with uh, modern uh, uh, safety caps, or uh, <clears throat> they'll be uh, they'll be replaced. Uh, so R51, this is the resistor that was uh, coming apart. So I've got a replacement. I've got a 1K20 watt we'll be putting in there. And it looks like we've got a three-section can cap, a uh, 10, a 20, and a 20. Should be easy to do. So I think that's going to be step number one for this radio is we're going to uh, fix up the cord. We're going to fix up this resistor, and we're going to 
recap that there and uh, check the tubes and whatnot. Probably move on and do some stuff around the audio tube like I usually do. Let's just take a quick look at it. Uh, I think somebody's already put a new electrolic in down here. That looked like it was done okay. I'll just check it, but we'll go and do the resistors around the tube and check the tube itself. So that's going to be step one. Great news! We've reached a milestone with YouTube that allows our subscribers to offer us a great big thanks in the way of a tip. The funds collected from your generous tips will be used to buy more old radios and parts to generate more great content. On a PC, if you click on the three dots in the bottom right corner, you can choose thanks from the menu and choose your tip amount. If you're on a mobile device, again you can seek thanks in the lower right hand corner. Your consideration and support of our channel is certainly greatly appreciated. I thank all of you that have turned this so quickly into a great community. We'd like to thank Chris, Andrew, and John for generously con contributing to our community. Your donations will go a long way towards supporting more great content on our channel. Thanks guys. New power cord is in. Three pronger. I got a box of uh, 30 of these brand new computer cords for $30 off eBay. So nice and supple and soft still. I thought it was a good deal and I, uh, I snagged that box up pretty fast. So this is the strain relief I put in for the new cord, the usual one that I normally use. And uh, I've rewired the uh, AC circuit as we described that uh, we have the neutral going directly to the transformer and the hot goes through the fuse to the switch and back to the transformer again. So that's uh, safe. And of course, I put in uh, two new uh, Y-class safety caps, got rid of the old burnt ones. I got chunks taken out of them. So the next step is dealing with some of these caps and that resistor. Now, this is all real shaky looking right now. This resistor, it's just floating. There's no terminal block or anything holding all this together. So it's kind of a bit of a mess. So what I have, I have these guys here. This is a thousand ohms, 20 watts um, to replace that resistor. So they've got these nice standoff mounts on it. So I'm thinking about drilling and putting a couple of screws to mount that resistor in there for safety's sake, to, to hold it down. So I'm thinking of something along that line and wiring it up accordingly. So uh, let's uh, let's start on that job and see where we go. Uh, let's see if we can get this cleaned up some. Okay, <clears throat> well, this was a bit of a mess. There were some errors done by whoever put in the other caps. They had... Uh, Put one of the 20 microfarad caps in, in the wrong spot. Not that it was detrimental to anything, but it certainly wouldn't be doing its job. And I did notice that uh, when I was originally listening to the receiver on uh, exceptionally strong stations, I could hear a small hum in the background. So I suspect that now that was coming from this power supply being so poorly looked after. So what we've got here now um, is we have three new caps. I've installed the terminal block down here. This is our new resistor here that's been properly screwed into the uh, chassis, being held very firmly. Um, and some new wiring I've cleaned up around the base of the rectifier tube. I've been through all of the uh, capacitors and resistors at the base of the audio tube. Everything checks out okay. So... Um, I have a video out there uh, repairing tube radio step by step. Um, this is step two in that process, actually, as to where we uh, deal with the power supply, the capacitors, and the base of the audio tube. So you might want to look that video up if you haven't uh, haven't seen that yet. So it all worked out fairly clean. Everything is fairly solid. It's much more secure. It's much more safe. Um, this is an input filter, input filter choke uh, type of power supply. And I think we can use this example to do a little bit of learning. So we're gonna go back to the schematic and talk a little bit about capacitor values um, for 
this type of a this type of a circuit. So let's just pull up the schematic. Okay, here we're looking at the power supply, and this is the big filter choke right here, denoted as L4. So the first capacitor is 10, and you might say, well, gee, that's kind of small. I could stick a big one in there and get better filtering. Well, you that would make for a very unhappy uh, inductor here. Um, and let me explain why. Um, a transformer is a device that prefers to deal with AC. So coming out of the rectifier, your rectified DC has got a significant amount of ripple to it. And what's ripple, you say? Well, let's look at this. These dotted um, waveforms are rectified AC into DC. They're flowing in one way. Um, but in between them, there's big drops and voltages. So a capacitor or an inductor will strive to fill in the gap, if you will. So this fluctuation in voltage on the surface of DC is considered ripple. So let's just go back here now. So this inductor is expecting to see a significant amount of ripple. Um, that's what it likes to do with. If you fed that pure DC it, that had no ripple, essentially you'd be turning that coil into a light bulb filament, and it wouldn't be a very happy inductor at all. And I'm trying to explain this as simplistic as possible. This type of input choke filtering has got a ton of math and a ton of theory behind it to be able to design one. So the important thing to remember is, is that the first cap you might be able to increase it a little, but don't increase it a lot. Same with the second cap. You can increase it some more. Like a 20, you could, you could put a 33 in there safely. And uh, this one here after the resistor, you could most certainly put a 33 in there. So it's important to remember when dealing with input filtering choke that this first cap, you don't drift too far from its original value. Uh, and you can go a little bit further uh, with the second one, like you could put a, a, a 22 or a 33 in there happily, and you could certainly put a, a, a 33 in here. So that's kind of sort of important to remember that you don't want to filter the output of the rectifier too much before it hits the choke. If you're feeding the choke straight DC or a much cleaner, less ripple, you're going to get into a heating issue and potentially maybe burn the burn the uh, burn the inductor out and so we really don't want that so uh, when it comes to input choke filtering try to stick close to the original values but once you get past these resistors you can uh, hang a little extra on they were stingy in the old days because things were expensive and they just did what they needed and it doesn't hurt to hang a few more microfarads on for a nice clean signal so let's um Let's flip the radio over, wire it up, and uh, see what it sounds like. Um, although we're not finished, we're going to go and do the resistor checks. That's going to be in the next video. But let's flip it over for now and, uh, and see if we can uh, detect an improvement with our power supply. At least give it a good test anyways. Okay, here we are all wired up with a speaker. <coughs> Turned on okay, everything looks good. Uh, we're at the bottom of the standard AM broadcast band. And then the cold front will move through. We drop down to an overnight low of two degrees. And then for tomorrow, that, that hum I was talking about is gone. It's just nice and clean. 30 kilometers per hour. Gusts could be as strong as 40, even 50 kilometers per hour. And a mix of sun and cloud with a high of five. It is cold. You're headed out to the parade tomorrow, so make sure. <laughs> listeners to call, you'll receive a free doorbell camera with the installation of your slowness. Got him after many hours of police surrounding a house in Trenton, New Jersey. One, 
42 on First Half Conference USA, Western Kentucky. The on BZ News Time 903. Traffic potentially secure a playoff berth here in year three. Getting Wednesday, March 20th at 7 p.m., you can watch the in the CTV series. Months after that fire killed more than one. Well, that sounds people. great. Breaking news and analysis, townhall.com. So they covered the minor numbers underneath, but they didn't want to put the numbers on. <laughs> now, these are corrupt people. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. We're not finding out. It's getting out slowly. Maybe we'll get some light on this darkness. You know, evil hates darkness. They tried to. Wow, that sounds great. The audio is greatly improved. They didn't call up Hillary Clinton to learn how to use leech bit. To thoroughly erase it off a drive. Shows of God. They're unashamed. They, your significant does not as. Okay, there's some sideband. Let's try it the BFO. works for it too. Here's a uh, great example of the uh, crystal filter on this thing. We're listening to an amateur radio AM station who's very close to uh, a broadcast station and the uh, etterdyne is just a, math, a mess. Time of day photographs, there was a, a shadow. So if we engage the filter... With the filter, get out the filter or an aircraft. I don't know which. And yeah, that seems to be the case about airline maintenance. Uh, they're not uh, as strange so about can You can almost take that whole heterodyne out. You can't completely remove it, but you removed enough of it that uh, you could completely understand what the guy was saying. So it really, really makes a difference. Uh, that's for sure. So uh, we're going to wrap this video up here. Um, the next time we're going to come back, we're going to go through all the res resistors and then uh, start looking at alignment. Um, it performs pretty good. I do know that the dial calibration is out. Um, I'm skeptical about spending a lot of time with dial calibrations because we, we saw the bottom of it and all the tuning coils that were there and capacitors and whatnot. Great, so it's highly adjustable. But when it goes back in its case, the, the case bottom is going to come close to that. And there's no holes uh, to uh, tune this thing in the case like a Halicrafter will have holes in the bottom. So you can do the final tune through the bottom and get your dial calibration and uh, all that stuff spot on. So uh, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I'm skeptical. There's no holes in the bottom of the case. And when you put it back in the case, is it going to drift a bunch? So I guess we're going to find out the hard way. So, thanks for tuning in. If you like the uh, series of videos we're doing, please like, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. So, until the next time, we'll see you again.